Recode Camp, JavaScript algos and data structures. We are in the ES6 course on challenge 27 of 29. So today we're going to complete a promise with resolve reject. So in this previous example, uh, let me just actually open this up. Well, it's not here, but we basically just set up a promise like this. We basically just defined a promise. We didn't actually add anything to the body of the promise, the actual code block of the promise. We just defined it here. So in this next example, we're actually going to complete a promise with the resolve and reject methods that get passed in the callback. So as you can see from this boilerplate code, um, this looks very similar to what we had before. We have our const make server request. It's equal to a new promise that we pass in our reject resolve. And then we have some new stuff going on here. So what this is trying to teach us is that first off, a promise has three states, pending, fulfilled, and rejected. The promise we created in the last challenge is forever stuck in pending because we did not give it away to complete. The resolve and reject parameters that are passed to the to the callback argument. So you can see within the promise, this is the callback code block. All of this is the callback arrow function. These resolve and reject parameters are how the function actually, or I'm sorry, the promise actually completes, how it fulfills or it rejects. As they said, it's the previous one is forever stuck in pending because we never actually gave the code away to reach these methods to actually activate those. So resolve is used when you want your promise to succeed. Reject is used when you want it to fail. These methods, uh, these are methods that take an argument as seen below. So let's look at this example. Um, th the one thing about promises, guys, that I think I kind of mentioned in the previous example, uh, the previous lesson, is that this is asynchronous code. So we're getting away from synchronous code, which everything we've done before has been synchronous, meaning in sync one after the another. Uh, this is asynchronous, meaning we have to wait for a delay. There's an unknown delay in the code, and we just have to await for that delay and then do something after it. That's kind of how I see or how I, how I explain uh, asynchronous code, right? Is it's not immediate. There's something that has to take place that takes a little bit of time, and then we want to continue with the code. So that's an example of a promise. For example, a server request, right? We have to send the request, kind of hold our hands out waiting for the response, and then finally we get a response back, either a successful response with data if we resolve, or a error and we reject. So that's the whole idea most server requests are promise based uh, just because promises are kind of the go-to in JavaScript for quick asynchronous action. Okay, it's kind of like a function that is not immediate. So what we're going to do here is change this code so that we actually activate these resolve or reject methods within the promise callback. Okay, so you can see if whatever condition you know, assuming it's success, right? Assuming we get our data back, we want to resolve, the promise fulfills. Otherwise, if it was not success, we want to reject. The promise was rejected. So the important thing to note here also is we can see that we're just passing strings to these functions because these resolve reject methods are functions, but we really can pass anything here. So in this example, we are going to pass strings, but often you would pass the data right? The whole point of the promise to fetch this data from a server. If you resolve, if you get your data back successfully, you would pass the data to that function so that you would actually get the data out of the promise. And then if you reject, you would get an error back from the, the server request of what, whatever server you were sending that request to, right? You would get a error back and you would reject and pass it the error instead of the string. So this is just another basic example just to kind of demonstrate the concept in free code camp. But again, good thing they're noting that, that yeah, normally you would pass the data to the resolve and then an error to the reject that you got back from whatever asynchronous action, whatever server request you made. Okay, so all we're gonna do here is change the promise to handle success and failure. So success and failure is gonna be dependent upon this if, uh, this response from server variable. So if that's a Boolean value of true, then we're gonna resolve. If it's false, then we're going to reject. Okay, so that's all we have to do here. And we're going to pass it different string values upon resolve reject. Okay, so once again, normally, we wouldn't just be passing, we got the data or data not received, we would actually pass the data. Um, 
logically, but in this example, once again, just kind of seeing how this works, we're just going to use it on uh, dependent upon this response from server variable and just pass a string. So if response from server is true, that's what this is saying. If response from server, all conditionals evaluate truthy falsy. So if true, do this. If false, do this else. So, so this is the exact same thing as saying if this is equal to true. Okay. So if that's equal to true, we want to resolve and then else, that means it's not equal to true, so we want to reject. And you can see we're getting the resolve and reject methods, the actual arguments, from the arguments passed into the callback of the promise. Because naturally, when we say new promise, the callback gets these arguments. Okay. So then now if we resolve, we just want to pass it. We got the data. We got the data and then if we reject we want to say data not received so string data not received okay and that's all we should have to do for this lesson so if the condition is true so you can see same thing it just didn't like that because free code camp has some automated checking stuff that you, you know you can conflict if you don't have the exact characters they want but this is the same thing as saying if this equals true, right? If it's if it is true, um, shorthand there, something to to definitely remember and take note of. So that's all we had to do for this one, guys. I hope that made sense. You know, once again, resolve reject are default methods that get passed to the callback of the promise, and then all we have to do within the promise is based on the asynchronous action, whatever happens here, if it's a success, resolve it, pass it the data, else that means it's a failure reject it, pass it the error or whatever you want to pass it. Okay. So hope that made sense. We will definitely see more examples of asynchronous code and promises in the future on free code camp. So I hope to see you guys in the next lesson. Leave a comment. If you have any questions, take care.